Aloha, everybody. Welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another episode of Security Matters. Today, we're going to talk about something that I think evades a lot of our industry, and this is how do I get involved with the federal government? How do I do business with the federal government? What's it all about? Is it as hard as it seems? Um, I've heard a lot of integrators talk about that difficulty that they perceive, and I think government could use your services. So I've got a couple of experts here today. Wayne Esser is with us from the uh, Blue Ocean Advisory Group, and I've got Dira Bluestone with us from PAE. And we are going to talk through this. Con we're going to have a conversation about doing business with the government, and I'm going to tee that off of a lot of the experience that they've had building the companies that they've built that service the government sector. So first, uh, I'll let Wayne and Dira introduce themselves to you, and then we'll kind of get going. And Dira, we'll let you go first. Uh, welcome. Dira, thanks for joining me today. Hi, thank you for having me. So my name is Dira Bluestone, and I've been in uh, business development capacity for about 15 to 20 years, specifically within the federal sector, uh, civilian, uh, DOD, and Intel. I have both managed a team and been an individual contributor working for integrators and manufacturers. So I think that gives me a pretty well-rounded approach to business development, opportunity identification, and procurement in general. I work for PAE. I'm their senior business development manager. And again, thank you for having me on the show. Awesome. Thanks. Wayne, uh, give us a little bit of your background there, sir, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, uh, I started as a government contractor in 1983, yeah, you know, right out of high school. And uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, so I've been at it a while. I started in the aerospace world. Uh, I worked on the manned space programs down at the Johnson Space Center and uh, ended up, um, I worked for a couple 8A companies, small business, then uh, Boeing hired me. And uh, so that was a, you know, an interesting contrast of uh, uh, environment. Uh, I, I then went to work on the shuttle program and then followed into the space station program. Uh, and then I moved out to the West Coast to their advanced programs group. And then 9-11 came along and I got into the security business, uh, whether I wanted to or not. And uh, so that was, you know, that, that was my introduction. Uh, we had a couple big programs right there early on helping DHS kind of get set up. Uh, uh, one, deploying the EDS machines uh, to all the airports for, for doing baggage scanning and, mm -hmm. and the like. And then, uh, then the SBI net program, which was a big border security technology program that uh, was kind of the first of its kind. Uh, you know, you could, you could argue the success of it, but it was it was a lot of lessons learned for, for CBP and, and for us. So uh, and, and then uh, from there, I went into more conventional security, you know, uh, infrastructure protection, that sort of thing. And I've kind of been, you know, operations, BD, you know, in, in, in the, you know, in the business world, everybody's in business development, right? Uh, <laughs> and, and so, uh, so, so, you know, that's, that's the, that's the story. I retired mostly uh, uh, 2018 and uh, have been just doing some, some consulting and, and helping, helping others, so to speak. So. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks for, we pulled you out of retirement today. So thanks for sharing your wisdom. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, let's, let's, let's go to a thing that, that I hear a lot from small businesses. Like, how do I get started? They, they go to their SBA office or they go uh, reach out through, through some of the um, groups like FCA maybe or, or NDIA and, and they, they don't feel that there's really help there. And so could you, could you both talk a little bit about maybe what you would tell the small guy uh, for starting out? What I feel like is that the small guy thinks, I got all this great stuff. Why doesn't anybody buy it from me? Instead of, they don't really go find the customer and do yeah. that, that homework and legwork they need to do. So do you maybe give us your, your insights on that, that, that market research that needs to be done? Sure. Well, I actually think that the little guy has a better chance of getting in faster than the big guy. And I think they're given a lot of privileges. They have certain ways into doing business with the government. They have the Small Business Utilization Office, which is dedicated to small businesses. And, and they're obligated to see small businesses when asked. So they have a direct route in. And while they might not be able to introduce them to any particular program manager or acquisition, officer, they certainly can direct them around the agency to get to know the agency. And besides, all large contracts have small business set-aside portions. So there are 
I mean, there's obligations. So partnering is always a good way to break in as well. And uh, I don't want to steal Wayne's thunder, so I'll give him a chance to speak as well. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, clearly those are some great ideas. Uh, every agency has their own small business utilization office. And some of them are very aggressive. Some of them are more passive. But uh, like, for example, DHS, uh, they've had a very strong small business utilization program, and uh, they're very willing to talk to you, show you the ropes, help you with the organization, and uh, it is it is a good place to start. Uh, there's, I think when you talk about the organizations like AFSIA and SIA, for example, uh, some of those organizations are very policy-driven and may not be so useful from a standpoint of, you know, getting new business, but they're an incredible networking opportunity. And I think the networking piece of it is, is absolutely very critical. Uh, we, you know, we, we run a, a networking organization uh, called the Security Forum here in DC. And there's, there's lots of these kinds of things uh, that are very focused on commerce as opposed to policy. And uh, you, you have a lot of opportunity to get with other people, other people like you, other people that need you, that sort of thing. So I, I think the whole networking thing is is really critical. And, you know, once you get your foot in the door, then it, you know, it starts, uh, you know, multiplying. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think re relationships cannot be under, they can't, I mean, they're so important for small businesses and getting work and doing business development. I mean, that's a, a, an amazing place to start. I've, I had fortunate enough to attend an event there with you folks at your forum and um, several events in DC. And I was like, well, this is where all the business is. Like you go to these <laughs> events in Hawaii and there's yeah. 12 people or 20 people. Yeah. And, you know, everyone in DC is business oriented, right? Where it seems that it, out here uh, in our um, little spot in the ocean, there's like a, more of a, of a, um, of a, of, a, of an opportunity seeking mindset, right? It's not, it's not, right. Hey, the business is here. How do we do it together? What makes sense for us? Um, how, how, um, how often do you have opportunities to network in the, in just like the DC area? It seemed to me that it's like every day of the week almost. Yeah. It, yeah. I think that, is, <laughs> I think that's true. You know, uh, there is a lot to do here, but uh, I think the, the thing is, is, you know, again, you have to kind of pick your vertical or so to speak, you know, you, mm. you got to get focused, uh, government. So too big, uh, it, it's too big. And, and, and so like our, our event is very network. I mean, it's very security focused. Uh, and we have three kind of people that show up people looking for a job, people looking for an employee and people looking for a partner. Th those are the three people, wow. you know. I also uh, think it's important to classify the difference between uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID because what you yeah. would do pre-COVID is not necessarily what you can do post-COVID. But pre-COVID, you can make a career out of going to a function every single day or a conference yeah. every single week. <laughs> and, 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 and there is probably too much. And I think we all have to get focused now on post-COVID, you know. We're going to get there. Uh, it's just it's just a matter of time. And and there's some things you can do, I think, pre-COVID or during COVID, but it is difficult uh, if you don't have the connections already. So uh, but it's a good time to start doing your research, take advantage of the online, you know, the uh, gosh, you, you know, it dates me. I keep wanting to call it the Commerce Business Daily, but uh, that was like 30 years ago. Now it's uh, <laughs> betasam.gov. Uh, where all the contracts, and that's where you can really go research each agency, see what they're procuring, what's coming down the pike, what's coming up for recompete. And if it's a great big thing, you might want to go talk to some of the prime contractors uh, about being on their team. If it's a little thing, you might, you know, uh, look at going to, you know, on your own. So there's, there's a lot of things that you could be doing right now to, you know, really get your, uh, uh, knowledge base put together. And you can also look for USAspending.gov, which agencies are getting the funding, what they're getting funding for, so you know what they're buying, so that you're selling somebody something that they're going to be acquiring. Let's let's take let's stay with that thread just a little bit. How much of BizDev is research? Let's just 
let's just ask that question. 90%, you know, and then 10% people, is it 80% research, 20% people, you know, make, making the relationships? What do you think? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. I, I think it is. Uh, so it is amazing what you learn from people in your networking that you can then go re research much better. Uh, it, you know, so it's, it, there's definitely a relationship there, but somebody, you know, you're talking to somebody and they said, Hey, did you hear about the, you know, the project coming out of FDA and maybe you haven't, uh, maybe you have, and you get a few tidbits and then you go research FDA and you find that program and you, and, and, and if you, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a subscription to say GovWin or something like that, you, you, you can really then go do some serious research. If you don't, you know, you go use uh, beta sam.gov and it has all the same things. It's not quite as friendly as, uh, as GovWin or, or uh, uh, some of the other programs out there. So if I had to put a percentage to it, I would say it's 60, 40. Oh, nice. 60% research. How about you, Wayne? Good. Yeah, I think that's a good number. Uh, you know, again, it's a little subjective as it would be, but I think that's probably closer than like 80-20. Uh, I think there's there's a lot of both uh, because they kind of feed off each other. Yeah, and I, I do think that, uh, you know, a lot of business people think that it, it's sales, right? They think when you say biz dev to them, they yeah. say sales, and biz yeah, dev is, is not, really yeah. – reaching out to define that opportunity and then finding out right. where you may fit. The federal government doesn't offer many – when they have a small program, it's huge, like for a small organization right. typically, right? Yeah. So, you right. know, you what piece yeah. can you play? How can you be part of that solution? Who can you partner with? Who's done it well before? Who had the contract? You know, why is it, why is it being given up or why is it becoming available? All those sort of things mm -hmm. are interesting levels of research, and I don't know if our – industry i have a i've had this opinion that our a lot of our industry people stand like on this pedestal i'm the security guy i know what i'm doing and so everyone should come to me for for my knowledge and the federal government has a million people just like you that know everything so they they right. ain't gonna they're not gonna come beating your door down you've really got to go to them and present yeah, yourself exactly yeah yeah no that's yeah. right you got to get out there and, and get yourself in front of them no doubt just like any other uh process you know uh, sure you know, uh, I, I doubt if commercial guys come hunting you down if they don't know you, you know, <laughs> uh, so so, so uh, government the same way. You got to get out there, you know, and, and, and do your due diligence. And, 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 and I think another thing that scares people off is, you know, you've got the federal acquisition regulations that, you know, uh, are just overwhelming. Um, for the most part, and I don't want to say they don't apply because they absolutely do apply. And it is a little more disciplined process probably than your, maybe your commercial business uh, uh, at a certain level. But it's, you know, a lot of it is common sense. I mean, it, it can be a little daunting, but at the end of the day, it's doing the same kind of things you're doing. There's just some guidelines around it. Uh, you know, so you don't have to have cost accounting system. You know, you can do it without a cost accounting system. Um, it does, you know, that kind of defines what you can bid, what you can't bid. So you just have to kind of wrap your head around that. And I, I think one of the biggest challenges anybody, and I've helped a lot of people go from commercial to government, and often they give it up because you really have to you have to have a different mindset. It's a it's a different environment. It's it's uh, and it's not hard. It's just different. And and if you if you're not willing to rethink your head, you know, get your head aligned uh, about how the government works, then you'll just wake up every morning with a headache. Uh, and so I, I think it's it's really critical to get your head around a different mindset of how you do business yeah i want to we're going to jump to a break when we come back i want to stay there because i want to talk about i think the fed government does it really really well and i think its providers are challenged to do it really really well and i don't think we get challenged in the commercial sector quite as much so we're going to pay some bills we'll be back in about one minute stick around
Aloha. Welcome back to Security Matters. We have Wayne Esser and Dara Bluestone with us today, and we are talking about working with the federal government, partnering, being a partner, doing biz development. And uh, we gave you a little hint of what amount of work that is. Um, I kind of wanted, I'll kind of, uh, Dara said something during the break that I think was important about business development being long, uh, a longer view. So, you know, this is not pay- maybe the place you send your sales guy to build this market. Uh, he's got to get a commission this week, right? So, uh, dear, why don't you talk about that just a little bit? I, I think it's a super critical difference. Uh, well, I was talking about the actual definition for business development is really creating long-term value for the company. And you really need to be dedicated to the federal sector if you're going to be working in that that area. Uh, the lead time on programs are like 18 to 24 months, and that's on a good day. So you really need to have the commitment, the drive, the creativity. Um, you need to be able to have the staying power, definitely staying power. That's awesome. Wayne, and have you seen that? I know you've helped a lot of groups get engaged. Is it, is it take them a few years to get on their feet? And then once they're in, they kind of get, they get the, the hang of it. Yeah, I think it depends. You know, uh, I've worked with, uh, I, I've, well, I've worked as an employee, you know, with some big companies and, and we've, you know, had to do it there, but, uh, but I've, uh, since, uh, since then working with kind of smaller uh, and, and I say small, anywhere from, you know, a $10 million company up to maybe a, a $70, $80, $100 million company. You know, uh, I worked in one in, in particular, and they're a very accomplished uh, security company out on the West Coast. Uh, I won't mention any names, but, uh, uh, and, and the owner of the company and I have become good friends. And, you know, he finally said, you know, I, I just can't, I can't do this, you know. <laughs> and and he's hey. very very you know he's very successful uh i think he and, and and again it was back to my comment earlier i think he just never wanted to really get his head around the mindset mm. at, you yeah know, and and he decided it wasn't his thing you know and so that's okay so i hate to bring up a a failure but uh you know sometimes you 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 really give it a hard and he gave it a really hard look uh the funny and, thing is that it get it's actually very easy there's a very regimented approach to doing business yeah, right. and once you understand it it's a roadmap and it's very clear you know what it takes to get from a to z so it's not yeah. that challenging and that confusing but i guess it's it's daunting for newcomers into the space you know, when, for, before we for went off stab- camera, go ahead, go ahead, Wayne. I was just going to say, for very established companies, uh, it's almost, in my mind, uh, you almost have to kind of set up a separate cost center, a separate, you know, it doesn't have to be a separate company necessarily, but, you know, an organization that has some independence from your commercial business, because it is going to be different decision-making processes and uh i think it, it, it would it would lend itself to a much higher probability of success yeah I, we um i can i can attest to that we've always done federal business but after we got our 8a we've those the that the government business and our commercial business and we also do municipal government which has its own set of rules yeah and right they all kind of function a little different they 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 do and we've we've adapted to that but we've been at it you know a couple of decades so it wasn't that difficult but uh I'm watching the government business at our particular company, and it seems to keep separating itself a little further and a little further. Yeah. And its processes yeah. are, you know, I think the I think they're more mature. Like I, I would like more modeling of my commercial workforce on the principles and the, sort of the way the government does business. I think they're mm-hmm. sort of leaders, and I may be a little prejudiced. My time in the Navy, I thought the Navy did things right, and I, I, I love those maintenance practices and all the stuff that we learned there. And I don't know. I just think business can learn a lot from the way government does business. It's regimented, it's organized. Uh, to your right. point, Dara, and you know, like, uh, why not chase 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 a, a high bar? Well, I think yeah. it's easier to do business in an agile environment where you're able to make quick decisions and you're able to to turn around or your decisions and they don't necessarily have to be pre-published and um, you don't need necessarily three bidders and you could just say yes or no. And so it's easier to do business in a commercial environment. So mm. I don't know if they're necessarily leaders because it takes so long, but um, <laughs> I, I enjoy it as well. I didn't come into this business i kind of fell into it and um i stuck with it and and i love it <laughs> that's nice um 
So Wayne, what do you think of the big the big guys? You've got a vision from uh, from your time at Boeing. Do they do they? Uh, I know many of them have small business partnership offices and programs where they want to take their their large programs and, and do set asides with with 8A and and certain other um, uh, disadvantaged set, um, op, you know uh, what are they disadvantaged businesses? But um, yeah, is that are those programs truly? viable are they are they are they agile do they pursue them and try to make meet their percentages and that kind of stuff oh, yeah. there's there's a lot of um, scrutiny on that to my understanding right uh there is uh there is some scrutiny uh and 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 part of well i i i can speak for boeing when i was there okay so i, sure. I retired from boeing in 2008 and you know i'm sure some things have gotten better but uh boeing had a very very strong supplier management organization for starters and within that supplier management was their small business team and mm -hmm. they were very aggressive now the you know so that's the good news the bad news is they ran you through the ringer okay uh you you know you had to be um good you had to be you, you know you had to really perform and they had so they rated you like gold, silver, platinum, you know, whatever. I don't remember all the colors, but uh, it was a very, very uh, active program. And we did a lot of mentorships where we would get, you know, set up formal mentoring relationships that the government recognized, uh, which is a lot more common now, uh, I understand, than maybe it was back when I was doing it. But uh, on the SBI net program, for example, I think we had seven uh, mentor protege agreements mm, with various yeah. uh, companies. Uh, but yeah, and 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 the, I think the you know the critique is, and I I I I'd certainly welcome hearing people's real critiques. But I know there's always never enough. You know. There, there's never enough that goes out to small business or, or so there's always people that I've had to go de I've had to go uh, justify to congressmen why this company didn't get this contract, you know, so they call their congressman, he calls, you know, <laughs> he calls somebody and one of our, you know, one of Boeing's lobbyists would call me and say, Wayne, you know, we have to go up on the hill and talk to Senator you know, uh, who's, you know, who's it and uh, uh, explain why we didn't give this company in his district a, a, a contract. Wow. You know, <laughs> it happens. And, and, uh, I, and I will assure you, that is not the way to get in the good graces of a big company. <laughs> yeah, so the, actually does a lot of mentor protege programs. So it is very popular yeah. over in my company. Yeah. And, and they're fairly so. large. They're about a $3 billion company. Wow, and so are, yeah. and how diverse are those? Are those are those happening across the range of the business sectors that, that PAE operates? Yes, yes, um, but they're very driven by opportunities and relationships. Okay, and, so, and what about past performance? You know, when you go evaluate a, a small business partner or a partner, or any partner for that example, what are you looking for in sort of like that past performance? I think a lot of folks don't understand you. You need to be able to prove to the government that you you have delivered the thing you're trying to sell to them. Uh, with some sort of, you know, the government measures its contracts, but if you haven't been in there and you're trying to get in, you know, what do you what do you hope to see from those kind of partners? I'll let uh, you go know, first. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think um, so. It, again, it 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 can be kind of depending on where you're trying to 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 get into uh, mm. to a job. But if you're working with a large company and they're out, you know, bidding lots of work, they'd obviously like you to have some past performance that they can contribute to making them successful, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the government and the big guys will all, they, they look at, you know, say you, you're, you're a relatively new company, you don't have a whole lot, but they do look at personal history. So, you know, if, if the principal of the company has been in the security business for, you know, 20 years and done this and done that, all that counts. So it's not, always just uh, uh, you know about having a contract uh, so so it's not you know you shouldn't feel defeated from the get-go if you don't have a bunch of big contracts for past performance but assuming you do have some personal experience uh, in uh, in that arena and I think skilling. any sort of ahead, relative Kira. any sort of relative 
uh, related past performance um, or any holes that that particular company might not be able to fill where they can backfill it mm -hmm. and utilize or lean on the uh, small businesses ability capability usually small businesses are a little more forward thinking they're a little more um, they have state-of-the-art products equipment expertise um, they, they're willing um, it, it's a little more personally uh, they have a lot of more uh, uh, personal interest and investment Sure, that, that, that passion's still there when, it, when they're small. Well, we've got a couple minutes left. Um, Deer, why don't you give us uh, maybe your final thoughts on just advice for somebody who hasn't, hasn't offered their services to government but wants to get engaged? I would definitely say it's a place that uh, all companies should be engaged. It's a lot of um, job security in that it's uh, the business is always going to be there. Uh, there's always going to be work. Uh, the payments are going to be made on time, whereas in, in the commercial sector, uh, there is uh, some speculation on that. I would definitely <laughs> say that they should try first getting into these small business utilization areas. They need to research on the agencies and, and what they're buying. They, they need to know who they're selling to and that their product is going to be something that they want. I think that small businesses should level uh, they should leverage all relationships, personal and business. Um, go to LinkedIn, go to um, go to networking events. I know it's hard on conferences with virtual conferences because there's no sideline conversations, but you need to get out there. You need to talk to people. You need to find multiple ways of getting into the agencies that you want to sell to. There are opportunities and people should not be scared away from doing business with the government. Awesome. Wayne, she took up some of your time there, but your final thoughts, sir? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I, I can't say enough about, you know, uh, getting out there and talking to people and, and, and just learning what's going on. And, and you get that from talking to people. And I, I would highly, you know, suggest that anybody that, especially small companies, they should start with the big primes, uh, you know, guys like Convergent and, uh, uh, Johnson controls and, you know, uh, that they're out there in the security world in large ways and they have a lot of small business requirements. Uh, so, and, and they're all over the country. So it's not like you have to be in Washington, DC. So I, 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 th I would highly recommend, uh, that sort of thing. And maybe, you know, there's some networking, you know, y'all could set up locally that could pull in those kind of, uh, players. You know, sure. And yeah, we'd be happy to help you do that. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. All right, folks. Well, that's our wrap. I hope you picked up a few tidbits. The federal government wants your business. Take it to them. Dear Wayne, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time to share with our audience. Yeah. And I look forward Absolutely. to maybe maybe we'll swing back and do this again after COVID's over and we'll see how things are going. Yeah, great sounds job. great. All right. Aloha, everybody. Have a great day. Aloha.